when was the first time that you came to the States? <gasps> a long time ago. Okay, do tell. Okay. We are Asian. Do you call yourself South Asian or Asian? You know what? I do South Asian, but people from Toronto, it's weird. When we say Asians, we don't mean us. It's a very weird Americans thing. Americans don't mean that yeah. either. They mean Far East Asians, but exactly. I'm Asian as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Anyway, so uh, my mom is Asian, mm -hmm. obviously. Hence the call. <laughs> um, and so my mom, uh, so we were, I was a kind of Asian that didn't leave the house. We weren't allowed, I had really strict Muslim parents. Okay. And so I had friends at school, but I was not allowed to hang out with my friends outside of school. So I was a really good boy, never asked to hang outside of, out of school. And so I said, mom, look, I'm 17, or I was about to be 17, it was my 17th birthday. And I said, you know what a good boy I am. Ofs. Do you know how responsible <laughs> I am? Ofs. Um, I said, can I go and stay at my friend's house across town, 15 minutes away? She knew who these friends were. Other Asians, yeah, you're perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. Please just trust me. You, do you remember the movie, The Valley of the Lung Yellow Giant? Of course, saw so four I... times in theaters. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Do you remember that moment when she said, just let me have that one last hurrah and then yeah. I'll be everything you Absolutely. ever wanted me to be? Absolutely. So that was my conversation. Let me have just one week with my friends across town. I'm 20 minutes away, you know exactly where I am. Right. Fine. Instead, I booked a trip to New York for my 17th oh! birthday. Seven, I was 16, about to turn 17, and I flew across the world, and that was my first trip to New York with my other 16-year-old friends. I know. And I lived it up. I did it like a boss. I went to the 4040 Club, which is Jay-Z's club. I got in because I... Brown ages real quick when you're younger, so I looked 30 when I was 17. <laughs> and so I got into that club, no issue whatsoever. So I was there dancing away at 17 at uh, Jay-Z's 44. Wait, hold on. The what, best trip of my life. When did your parents find Are they finding out right now on this show? <laughs> she found out a few a few months ago. She hit, she saw it on an interview. Oh, oh like, my God. But what she found out was that I did this every six months for about six years. <laughs> This is what you get for trusting your kids, parents. <laughs> no, 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 that's not what it is. You know how it is. This is what you get for not trusting your children. You've just got yes. to, like, we have to lie. True. You make True. us lie. True. True. Give us, give me some freedom and I won't have to lie. But as a brown kid, you have to lie about everything. I will say the brown kids I know that are the most messed up, not that you are, uh -huh. are the ones that are super strict parents because they did have yeah. to rebel and lie so much to do anything. Every day, I yeah. just thought, can't you just make my life easier? Let me do what I want to yeah. do. They're the ones that are changing into the miniskirts in the alleys. I really know. Those are the ones. I was always in a miniskirt in the alley. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> So how was it? Okay, so we talk about you in England, then you came to the States. How was it that you end up in Salt Lake City, Utah? Don't laugh. <laughs> Have any of you been to Salt Lake City, Utah? Have you been? It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Why wouldn't I end up there? But I, so here's the thing. I used to yeah. vacation in America regularly. I used mm -hmm. to go to New York. I lived in New York for a while, and my housemate was from Salt Lake City. And he was like, come check it out. It's gorgeous. And I was like, mm, yeah, fine. And so I went, and within the first hour, no joke, Lily, I was like, this is my home. Like, forever. Really? No. Let me tell you why. I'd never met, don't be offended, brace yourselves. I'd never met white men that didn't drink. And then I went to Utah and they were full of Mormons who didn't drink. I was like, there are hot white men that don't drink all the time? <laughs> like, this is where I'm going to find my husband. And I'm Muslim, so I don't drink. I'm like, oh my God, I finally found hot white dudes who don't drink. And so I started vacationing there every three months and finally I found this hot white dude and he wanted to marry me. And I was like, I'll marry you too. And so I've been there for 11 years. I love it. So, Daniel, obviously has such a signature flawless, fabulous look, which I, I adore. Yes. So I was a little thrown aback, let's say, when you posted this throwback picture. Let's take a look. <laughs> My friend, there's a lot to unpack here. Walk me through what's happening. OK, here's the thing. I was, like, 20. I was Biebering before Bieber was even a thing. <laughs> Bieber can thank me for that. Um, I didn't know what to do with my hair at the time. I had really, really bad hair even there. And I thought, well, what can I do? I'm just going to straighten it. So I used to straighten it with a straightening iron. And if you look closely at that picture, like, I've straightened my sideburns. They were like, this <laughs> long. And somehow, my husband still wanted to date me looking like that. Like, I married a good man. It's what's inside, not just outside. <laughs> However, what I will say is this. My face looks just as young now as it did then, so... <laughs> yeah. Yes! 
I take care of my skin. Amazing. Sam, we always have to congratulate you on your new Thanks. show, Next in Fashion. Okay. Woo! Streaming on Netflix right now. What can you tell us about it? Um, it is a global fashion competition mm -hmm. show. Um, I co-host it with somebody incredible. Her name is Alexa Chung. If you don't know who it is, lock her up. She's amazing. She's formidable. Um, and the designers that we have on this show are world class. The person that wins this whole competition is, in my opinion, the next major face of fashion. You're going to be blown away. It's the most exciting thing I've worked on in a long time. I love that it's for you amazing. so, so much. And the fashion, you don't even know. I know you love style. I promise you, you're going to love this. If you're saying that, then I absolutely cannot wait. You're gonna love it, I promise you. So I feel like you've never, you, you've never really done a show like this. This is completely different for you. Yeah. Was there a learning curve associated with this type of show? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna throw that question back at you real quick. Okay. You, so you have a teleprompter. Yes. Obviously. Yep. Did you? What? No, I have this I memorized. Know. What? <laughs> <laughs> Learn to so, um, so do you have an IFB as well? Can I, I don't. This? So, so that's an ear piece. I don't have one. No. Okay. So let me explain this to you all. So you have a, a teleprompter, and then sometimes you also have an IFB. Mm -hmm. You need to be trained for that stuff. Netflix thought, it's Tan. He'll be able to do it. He'll wing it. <laughs> it was so hard. So I start every episode. We have a full audience, and you have to go from teleprompter to this thing called IFB. And I turn. And this person who's reading my script in IFB has an American accent, very strong American accent. And you have to follow two seconds behind. And so you're there repeating what they're saying, not looking at the teleprompter. And then all of a sudden, let's say, for example, they're saying, and then she's going to go get some water. But they're saying it in their American accent. And so I start to say, and then she's going to go get some water. <laughs> and you have to stop the whole show because they're like, no, turn. Don't forget your own accent. It's so, hard. it's so hard trying to track an American when you're trying to speak an English accent. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. In, in my opinion, once you see it edited, you will not notice that of that's course. the first time I've ever done it. <laughs> but this isn't easy. Let me, uh, one more quick thing. You need to give her a round of applause, because this is Oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Oh, it's hard. It's the amazing. whole thing. Reading out. I always struggled reading out loud. I'm going to sound really lame, but I always struggled reading out loud as mm -hmm. a kid. Like, I, I used to get really embarrassed by it, but now I have to do it for a living. No, it's, it's, it's it terrifying. It doesn't get easier. It's absolutely terrifying. People are going to realize that I'm a dum-dum and I can't read English. No, oh. not even.